Hey, great. Thanks, everyone. And um, I hope you're having a great day. And uh, I, I do want to mention the, to Chris, the last speaker, I, my healthcare industry is a little different. Um, I work in a company called IDEX Laboratories, which is located in Maine and the New England part of the United States. And um, IDEX Laboratories is focused on veterinary diagnostics. So quick question, how many people have a pet? Anyone? Yeah, so we all, we all have pets and we take them to the vet. And if you've ever in, uh, had to do that and have your pet checked for something, there's something wrong with it and uh, your veterinary took a sample, um, it's probably likely that they interacted with and used some type of IDEX product. IDEX makes hardware for in-house in diagnostics for veterinarians to conduct tests on samples. And we also provide a reference lab service where you can send your sample to the lab to have it tested. And those results come back to the uh, veterinarian through a number of applications that IDEX builds and supports. Uh, so I'm gonna talk a little bit about how at IDEX we, we have a number of uh, legacy applications. We're constantly building new applications. We do acquisitions of ex applications um, through those ac uh, acquisitions, and all of them come with some type of identity store, uh, usually some kind of custom-built, homegrown authentication system. And uh, you know, through the course of our history, we've come to realize that that's just not a scalable or sustainable uh, way to handle things. So what we wanted to do was really consolidate it. There's a huge benefits, as we all know, to managing uh, user information these days and, and identities. Um, in terms of our marketing group, there's a huge value to kind of consolidating those uh, identities into, from w multiple identity stores into a single one. So I'm gonna give a little bit of an overview of um, the history, the, what we did, the, what we called the solution at IDEX, our goals and the benefits and where we landed in terms of some of the data from that effort. Um, so IDEX uh, has been around for about 25 years now and in 1998, an application was, start, was developed called VetConnect. And the VetConnect application is the customer-facing tool that provides veterinarians access to the results from the diagnostic tests that they've had performed. And that was the first login application at IDEX, uh, 1998 or so. Uh, and that was around for about a decade before more of those applications started to be built. Uh, in 2009, we built, an there was an application that was built called my account, and it was a, essentially, a, again, a homegrown authentication system um, with a profile management component, uh, single sign-on across a couple of different applications um, that was effective and useful at the time, but uh, eventually it wore out its uh, kind of long-term life. So in 2011, an extension was made to the um, VetConnect application and some decisions were made about the original design to say let's split the authentication components from, from um, the rest of the application, the profile management, uh, and also accommodate for more service providers to basically adopt this solution. Um, it lasted for about two years and um, a, a, a big initiative that came, uh, it took place at IDEX, IDEX had decided to make a very a strategic business decision to shift from a distributor model in the United States to a go direct model. Prior to that, any of the um, consumables that we would sell to the veterinarians, they would acquire those through various distributor mechanisms in the country. And uh, there was a huge opportunity for us to go, go direct through basically our own e-commerce platform. So in 2013, an e-commerce solution was built uh, on top of that system. Um, and it, and it was, it was still working, but it was um, not really leveraging some of the best practices that we would expect in the security world uh, from a user experience perspective. Uh, and again, from a scalability perspective, we knew that there are more acquisitions that would come that would need to be bolted onto this. So um, in two, 2016, we basically initiated a project to retire that legacy system completely and migrate it into a new um, standards-based solution that allowed us to handle authentication using a variety of protocols um, that provided federation, provisioning, and a concept that I'll call that we call affiliation. Um, affiliation for IDEX is um, IDEX deals with basically we're a, a B2B um, company, so 
our veterinarians are an identity, but they're part of a business that we interact with. So we can't necessarily interact directly with them unless we know which veterinary practice they're doing that with. So we had to create a kind of a, an extension to that that we call affiliation. It's essentially a claim or an attribute that's attached to an identity, but it requires its own mechanism by which uh, through self-service a person can uh, create that relationship with IDEX. So that was part of that. And um, so we partnered up with WSO2 in 2016 to, to basically help us solve that problem. Um, you know, the, this is basically the key problem that we attempted to solve, which was get rid of the multiple authentication solutions, um, consolidate the number of identity solutions that we had within the company uh, to really refine the user experience. Each of these applications have their own login screen. So if you're a veterinarian in a busy practice, you can imagine that you go from one IDEX application to another, you, you might not even realize you're actually working within the same company based on the branding and uh, experience that you might have had. So that was a key aspect of one of those challenges that we wanted to solve. Um, the other problem, even bigger, was that I, as a user, had an identity in each one of those systems and potentially a different username if one had already been taken that I wanted to use and password requirements and complexity were potentially different as well. Uh, you'll notice that there's a little theme here with animals in the slide deck, because IDEX is all about animals, so I just thought I'd point that out for you. So we, we kind of created a mission statement for us moving forward in 2016, which was to create this integrated experience across all of IDEX's applications. Uh, that's you know easy because veter veterinarians are under a lot of stress to help animals that are, you know, dogs that are crying in, in pain or in suffering. Uh, and just make it easy to register, log in, and, and really use our applications. That's kind of our prime directive. Uh, so, you know, we, we had a number of stakeholders in the, in the company. It's a, it's a fairly big company. We're a global company, so we had to consider all the various lines of business that might use the solution, uh, the fact that it's, it's a, it needs to be internationalized, localized, to the various languages that we contend with. Um, we needed to really have something that every time we had more identities added to the solution, we weren't gonna incur increasing costs per identity or per login. Uh, we wanted to actually standardize on the use of email as a login ID. I know that some companies do that, some don't, and there are probably different points of view on whether that's a best practice, but for us, it actually made uh, a lot of sense in terms of, you know, obviously if you forget your password, the easiest way to remember it is to use an email reset. And prior to this initiative, that wasn't the case. If you had to uh, reset your password or could remember your login ID, you had to call customer support, go through a five to seven minute phone call to get that figured out. Hopefully it was resolved. Uh, oftentimes what could have happened was a new ID was created for you, so now you've got yet another ID. Uh, within the IDEX ecosystem of applications. Uh, so it really just, you know, that was a critical piece. Email allowed us to also avoid the use of security questions, which I think we all may realize is not a best practice anymore and being phased out. So um, we standardized on the email piece. We also wanted to, we have a concept uh, within that B2B space of there's a, generally a person in the practice who's responsible for managing the users within their practice. Uh, so we needed to have the ability to create a special way for ad, a person to become an administrator within that practice. Uh, and most importantly, we had to not interrupt the user experience um, minimally, which I, I don't think it's, impos it's possible to do it at all, to not do it at all, but uh, we, we, we approached it with a, what is the least customer impact that we could do? Um, so th those were kind of the goals. Um, how did we do it? We, you know, we did go through the standard RFI, RFP process, went through a number of other vendors in the identity space. Um, and we ultimately settled on, uh, as obviously with WSO2, and we partnered up with them with their architecture and support services, who were really great to work with in terms of kind of looking at our problem space and working with our delivery team to say, here's probably the best way to solve the problems that you're contending with. Uh, we identified some customizations that were going to be needed to the identity server platform. Um, out of the box, uh, 
it didn't do what we wanted to do. So, and one of the key things that we wanted to do is part of the kind of minimal impact experience, but also achieve our goal of transitioning these identities to an email-based login was what we called a, um, a user provisioning process. So a user could log in, basically they'd log into their, to our applications using their existing credentials, and the system would recognize that they were using their old credentials, prompt them through a user-friendly experience to say, hey, you, you know, we've changed our process. We'd like you to update your identity to use an email, as well as you know, confirm that email. So that was a key piece of what we wanted to accomplish. Um, and uh, so um, that necessitated some doing some customizations to the custom authenticator and the primary user store manager that's in place in WSO2. The primary user store manager in IS did not use email as a username necessarily. That It had email as an attribute for an identity as a claim, but not necessarily as your username or login ID. So we, we worked with the team and came up with some ways to customize both that solve that problem. Going through the normal development cycle, we did an extensive amount of, of work in our non-production environments. Uh, you know, we did tons of load testing, performance testing, and really security, which was a critical piece to this. Uh, as I said, the prior systems, they necessarily didn't all follow good practices. And there were some interesting discoveries around the lack of complexity in terms of user, uh, password requirements, um, inconsistent usernames, the fact that um, there might have been hundreds of identities that were using email as an attribute, but they were all the same email address. They were actually not legitimate. So there's a lot of bad data in there that we really wanted to help get rid of. Um, and we wanted to make sure that all of this was going to um, you know, transition seamlessly for the user when we went live. And it's not an easy thing to do. It's a very stressful thing for a team to have that kind of pressure on them. Um, but with our, within our organization, and I, I call them service providers, but they're actually applications within the IDEX organization that are just basically bolting onto the identity server. Uh, tons of testing with them, validation, um, and you know, aligning on a cutover cut transition. Um, in a little more detail about what we do with the custom authenticator and user store uh, manager was um, the user will log in, as you can see, with their legacy username password, and the user manager basically will be able to identify uh, you know, the originating service provider based upon uh, part of the customization we did and, uh, and know which user store they should actually uh, authenticate against. And the reason why that's kind of challenging, and some of you may know this, but um, you know, depending on who developed the solution, if it's an acquired solution from an acquisition, um, or any number of circumstances, things like figuring out what the original passwords are may be impossible. They're encrypted using something, so using Identity Server to decrypt those passwords is not possible, so we had to kind of bring that old code into the system using the custom authenticator, and the user manager would then look at the, the service provider, know that they're a part of that pre-existing legacy user store, validate the credentials, and then, so they've successfully logged in, then go through a process of prompting them to update their identity with uh, email address, a new password, and upon success of that process, provision them into a primary identity store. Um, it was interesting because you come to a, a, a talk like this and you hear how other people have very similar problems, but how they all solve them a little differently. We decided to go with a central identity store uh, with the goal of, you know, eventually phasing these legacy identity stores out from these, uh, legacy, these existing applications. Um, the nice piece about this is that, as I mentioned earlier, we have a number of applications that we haven't actually fully brought on board. That's an ongoing process at the organization, but the design of it is scalable that we can bring these uh, existing legacy user stores with their own custom um, encryption and password management into this solution and then ultimately provision them into the primary user store. So at the end of this, which will of course never end because we'll continue to acquire probably other apps and things of that nature, but the, there, are, there ultimately becomes just one primary identity store for the organization for our customer facing components. Um, and those legacy user stores will be retired. As we bring other application, other user stores in, there's gonna be scenarios which we've talked about a bit already with WS2. We have some teams we're going to be spending part of this two, eight, second half of this year talking about, which is, you know, there's a challenge of 
I've, I've come from a previous application. I've merged that old application into the primary. Now I'm another one. And now I've got to do some account mapping. So the complexity will potentially increase. Um, but if a user has already gone into that process before, um, it should be pretty straightforward. And our backend systems, we, we don't necessarily do just-in-time provisioning, but we use the schema ID as something that all the applications map to. Uh, so our expectation is that as uh, other apps migrate onto the end user's approach, our users won't be too burdened by it. They won't they'll just say, yeah, this was my old identity, and they'll put in their credentials, and it'll immediately be merged into the new identity store. Um, I probably a little bit uh, preach it to the choir a bit, but um, standards based, that was a key piece for us. You know, we, like I mentioned, a lot of these systems are, they're homegrown. Um, the, the team that built them is no longer around, potentially. Um, they may not have used best practices. Uh, encryption and um, password management might not have been done to you know, the standards at the time. So um, that was a key benefit for us using WSO2. We could support any number of protocols. We also have the opportunity to federate with other systems as well as we kind of use tools like Salesforce and some of our customers will be using Salesforce applications, then we want to be able to federate those identities. They can log into our system, and we can immediately give them access to that Salesforce-based application. Uh, we have third-party building systems as well that we can federate to. So there's that, that advantage um, as well. For the organization as a company, our group is able to basically provide identity as a service. All the application teams, they really you know, no longer need to build their own identity management solution within their application. It frees them up to focus on business priority features and, um, and value. Um, emails as login ID again, I, I mentioned that, but that really has been a huge benefit for our organization. No longer do we get calls to our customer support organization having to deal with password reset, forgot uh, username, and things of that nature. Just some other little things that we've um, been able to include is because we're now using a standard identity across these applications that integrate, we can now build what we, use, we call this cross-product global navigation, which is actually modeled a bit after Google. We've all seen the little grid icon where you can click it and you can see the various apps that you have access to. So uh, it's basically really en enabled our users to more readily get access to those applications. They know what application from IDEX they can use that's integrated with that existing ID. Um, in the past, there's actually cases where customers would call our support and say, I'm using this application, and then they would be told about another application, and they say, oh, I didn't even know that was part of the same company, or I could even do that. So it actually increased, it's a great marketing opportunity, increases awareness of what tools are available to the veterinarians, really in a readily clickable way. Um, Certainly by having you know, a single identity for our customers, we can measure um, all kinds of things. We can track what they're up to, what, what, you know, enhance that user experience. Um, we did migrate from an on-prem solution to an entirely cloud-based solution. Uh, been very pleased with that. It's performant, reliable, all the, all the things you look for in a modern system. Um, I, I, we did also a uh, common pattern used these days is to leverage a design system so that all of our applications now reflect that single brand experience from the organization. Uh, as new ones come on board, we can, they can follow that design system for the user experience and, and know that they're dealing with an IDEX product. Uh, in, um, in our case, we're a fairly big company, um, and... Uh, there are silos, every company has its silos. We're, we're not exempt from that. And uh, this allows us to standardize with the look and feel. We now have you know, an identity as a service, so an application team that needs to build something new uh, doesn't have to go through a lot of those things that traditionally they would have to do from scratch, uh, which is great. And um, it's a consistent, really ultimately at the end of the day, it's a consistent experience for our customer. Uh, just a simple screenshot. This is built on the WSO2 platform. We customized it quite a bit. Um, you can see a simple login screen uh, with the grid up in the top right for the cross navigation. Uh, really, you know, leveraging the identity server, the APIs. We, you know, the, a lot of the APIs in the version we're using are SOAP based, so we put a REST based API on top of them where we needed to. 
and did some extensions of the, the out-of-the-box solution um, to achieve this goal, but um, working really well for us. And um, so I just wanted to kind of point out that uh, for us, this is, uh, you know, we are like most organizations these days, very data-driven. We want to know how effective is the solution working for us. So since, this, since we went live in April of 2017, we've basically brought on 100,000 plus new identities, again, from around the world. And um, we continue to expand the available languages. We've designed a system that um, is really, it's really extensible to new languages. Uh, you know, basically, you just need a new property file, for lack of a better term, to add a new language to any, uh, any country. Uh, lots of activity in the logins. Um, the, the uh, uh, kind of important value for us that I wanted to point out, I mentioned a few times here, is this um, forgot password requests, right? So again, we were dealing with calls, and um, there are different levels of experience with end users, so sometimes those calls took longer than others. But with the new solution in this email-based process, we basically, in a, and this is as of June 2018, 108,000 forgot password requests. So. If, you know, if somebody wants to do some quick math, times seven, five to seven minutes, you know, that's a couple of FTEs you, ch you, can, you can probably uh, save some money on. Um, we, uh, affiliations and admins are kind of that B2B model where we, um, we customize the identity solution to allow us to create this new kind of relationship of an identity to a business to IDEX. Um, Lots it, heavily used for the API. We use the access token based API OAuth 2 to do that. And um, I'd like to say a testament to both my delivery team and to the WSO2 platform. We've had a 99.995% uh, uptime uh, since that go live, and um, it's been going really well. We did just recently do a migration from 5.2 to 5.5. Five. Uh, I don't know if the rest of you got the email today, but 5.6 came out, so we're going to have to get that onto the schedule. But um, we're really pleased with how everything's going. We really like the adaptive authentication that's coming um, as part of our forward-looking roadmap. We want to look at does our e-commerce system necessitate kind of using that scenario, like uh, when you're checking out, should you check uh, password again, um, and you know to ensure that it's the right person. Um, so that's it. This is Maine. If you ever get a chance to visit. Um, Check this spot out. This is where we're located in Maine. Um, that's my talk. Is anybody? <laughs> Just wanted to see if any questions. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we did not. We use. Uh, we actually use Splunk as our centralized logging. So we use quite a few other tools, and um, so it came from there. Yeah. Great. Any other questions? Yes. Yeah, I'm not, but I don't even expert, but I just noticed that you have some 8,000 admin accounts. Yes, yeah, so 8,000 8, admin accounts, not in the identity server, uh, but so it, con uh, conceptually that uh, we, we, here, here's IDEX. Here's a veterinary practice, and there are a number of users within that practice. And the practice uh, desires, uh, based on you know, feedback and research, that they want somebody to be able to essentially say that I'm a, I'm a member of that practice and have the authority to manage entitlements uh, you know, and what other, whatever the, uh, access they may be able to have. So we don't actually control the access of an end user in a practice. There's an admin who can do that for them. Yeah. Sure. I'm, I, I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. Uh, <clears throat> can you hear me? Uh, how you segregated the duties between the 8,000 admins and the identity server admins? So the, the relationship of the admin to the practice is actually just an attribute. It's not part of the admin role that's in the identity server itself. 
uh, if that makes sense. So we manage a admin role. The first thing that needs to exist is that relationship to the practice, which okay. is another attribute that says you're part of a particular veterinary clinic. And then within that veterinary clinic, you have a role, which is an admin. The admin role, it's not the admin role within identity server, if that's. Okay, okay. And do you, have, do you provide them uh, access to the identity server dashboard to manage those accounts, attributes, or to activate uh, the enrollment to particular the, practice the individual and users? assignment? Are you referring to the individual end user and yes, managing for their? Yes, yeah. admins, 8,000 admins. Do they have access to the dashboard? They, they, the WSO2 dashboard? Yes. No, we build a dashboard using APIs. So all the data that we need to, to get from WSO2, Okay, we you, you build APIs. your own application. So, yeah, we have our own application. We actually don't uh, use okay. much of the dashboard within WSO2 IS itself. We build our own dashboard. IDEX is very into its brand, and uh, so we customize it to such an extent that using, just using the APIs was the best way to go. Okay, and another question. Uh, what do you use for the back end of your primary identity? Oh, sorry, user store. Uh, so we're, this is running on Amazon, so we're using mm -hmm. an Aurora database, a MySQL compatible Aurora database. Okay. 